Okay, in this segment I want to talk about priorities and gameplay. And what I mean by priorities and gameplay is exactly what should you do at a given moment in Arena. The first thing I want to clarify is that there is no set damage rotation in PvP. The only thing that stays consistent as Shadow in PvP is that you want to stay in Inner Fire and Shadow form 100% of the time. Obviously, you can stay in Shadow form when you heal. And also you want to have a feather speed buff on you pretty much every time you move. But especially when you're going for fears. Also, the way to maximize your win chances is not necessarily by doing the most damage you can, but rather to create opportunities for burst damage for both you and your partner, combined with CC on the enemy. That being said, the best thing to do in a certain point of the game depends entirely on the situation at hand. So, besides DPSing and doing actual damage, you want to be thinking about helping your partners. That means dispelling them, healing, life creeping, etc. Purging helpful spells of enemies. A lot of times, purging a spell puts more pressure on the enemy team than simply doing damage. And positioning yourself so that you are in a hard place to reach for an enemy melee or a dangerous place to reach for an enemy melee or really close to a spot where you can line of sight, arranged, while at the same time staying in line of sight for your partners, your healer especially. I will go over positioning in more detail in the next video. Second, you should understand what makes a good player. Um, I have watched a lot of great players and read a lot of their guides and tutorials throughout multiple expansions and I personally saw or heard just a few of them touch on this topic. One of the most important things I have noticed about high rated players when compared to a lot of other players, myself included, is that um, they always play to win. Now I know that might sound stupid and obvious, but what I mean is they know when to go offensive, but even more importantly, they know when to stay defensive and um, turtle. <laughs> So I think it's this ability to recognize it's uh, best to just go defensive, CC, line of sight, kite and do everything necessary to basically not die while using a few cooldowns as possible and then retaliate with offensive and try to get control of the game back and is the, the, the factor that's gonna matter the most in your improvement. I'm gonna talk more in depth about this concept and a few others in a future video. Uh, it's probably gonna be the last one of this guide and you can click over here to go there directly. Now I'm gonna explain how and why you should be building up your damage and how to burst but it is up to each and every one of you to develop the, the skills required and to ask yourself is it the right time to burst? Should I rather heal my allies? Maybe I should be dispelling that fear word and go for a fear first. Or maybe I should grip my druid, because he's scattered. So I hope you get my point. Now, the way I see it, here's the priority list. Number one, don't die. You do this by positioning yourself properly and managing your cooldowns to counter your enemy's cooldowns. Also by communicating well with your teammates. My cat keeps uh, making screenshots. Number two, don't let your partners die. Again, you need to communicate with your partners and make sure they're not in trouble. You could assist them by healing, gripping, uh, mass dispelling, or simply CCing the enemy. Number three, get your three orbs. Number four, line up everything for the kill. The first two are kind of self-explanatory, so let's go over the last two. First, you must acknowledge the fact that you are not an Affliction Warlock, nor a Balanced Druid. You have no constant AoE pressure just because you have two dots on everyone on the opposing team. What you do have, however, is burst damage and strong CC. So both you and your teammates are out of danger. Your priority now becomes getting three orbs. This means you should be mind blasting on cooldown, again if nothing more important requires your immediate attention. To get the 3 orbs as fast as possible, it is best to keep Shadow Word Pain on as many targets as possible. 
That means keep it up on everyone including their pets. So you get this, right? It should be specced into Divine Insight and then every single one of your Shadow World Pain is going to give you a 5% chance per tick to give you an instant mind last. So as you can see if I keep dotting them soon I will have three orbs. It's kind of RNG. There you go. That's without casting anything. There's the fourth. So there's the fifth, you know. You want to have Shadow Word Pain on as many targets as possible. Also, you want you must have Vampiric Touch on uh, I would say at least two targets throughout the entire game. Otherwise you are going to go oom. Um. You use Vampiric Touch not necessarily for the damage it does, but more for the mana you gain and for the dispel protection, right? Because uh, in case you didn't know, with the force set bonus, see right here, when your vampiric touch is dispelled, the dispeller is instantly feared in horror for 3 seconds. That means the enemy healer can't just randomly dispel all your debuffs, you know, on cooldown. He can, but he is going to get feared. So keep Vampiric Touch on at least two targets, keep Shadow Word Pain on as many targets as you can, and get your three orbs as soon as possible. Once you have three orbs ready, Vampiric Touch and Shadow Word Pain with a decent duration, let's say half, on the target you want to go for, you are ready to go for Burst and attempt to score a kill. Let's go over the ideal situation to kill someone. Step 1. Purge your kill target so that he has no buffs, at least no big important buffs like Power Word Shield, Hand of Sacrifice, Earth Shield, etc. Step 2. Have 3 orbs ready and Vampiric Touch and Shadow Word Pain on your target. Step 3. Wait for your procs. Trinket proc is the most important one, but if you have tailoring you might want to wait for the cloak one as well. They usually proc at the same time because they have the same internal cooldown. I'll go over this in a second, but you want to wait for your procs, and if you have a mind blast and mind spike procs as well, all the better. Step 4, and this one is very important, make sure your partner, an example mage, can burst with you, He has so he has deep orb or fingers of frost ready, and he can cc someone in the enemy team. Step 5, cc the enemy healer, you can fear, silence, cyclone, deep freeze or polymorph him or anything else. Step 6. So use your unused trinket or your gloves enchant if you're an engineer. Then do the shadow fiend shabag which I showed you over here plus devouring plague on the same global. Get, then go for an instant mind blast or a casted one if you, did, you didn't have the proc. Then go for mind spikes if they are proc'd or mind play if they are not. Right, so let me let me show you what I mean. Let's say this guy over here is the healer, right? And this is my kill target. So I have the healer on focus, and my my kill target is, you know, dots check, procs check. So right now I'm going for a fear on the healer. Right, and I'm going to siphon and mind blast and uh, divine play at the same time. And then use all my procs, and then do this. Oh, there's a red. Let's kill the rat. Okay, let's let's do a small break from this tutorial so I can kill this rat for you. He seems like a nice guy. Oh, he wants to kill me. Hey, where's my? <laughs> I don't have any any cooldowns because I just used those. He's gonna have to bubble soon. Yeah, he's gonna have to bubble. Should I kill him? <laughs> He's running! Come on dude, I don't want to kill you. Let's say hi. Come on, hi. Come on dude, don't run away. What is he doing? Okay, I'm gonna kill him. What is he doing? Okay, whatever. <laughs> okay, sorry about that, guys. Let's go back to the to the guide, okay? I'm gonna say one more thing. 
after you devouring plague in case you have no procs so no surges of um, sur no surge of darkness and no instant mind blast the best thing you can do in order to maximize your damage is to go for a cast and casted mind blast and then channel uh, mind play right however if you are expecting to solace an insanity then you do not want to go for the casted mind blast if you have an instantly uh, an instant mind blast proc, then you want to devouring plague, use the instant mind blast, and then uh, insanity. Then use uh, mind play or insanity. Okay, but if you don't have the mind blast proc, you don't want to go for a casted mind blast because just casting insanity would do more damage. Step seven: follow up the CC on the healer with another CC. All extra orbs you get after your devouring plague are usually best spent on a horror on the healer. Not every time though. Step 8. Enemies either dead or you forced a lot of cooldowns. Good job! Step 9. Turtle until you can repeat or re if you have Wanderina. Now, what about in between bursts? What do you do if you have 2 or 3 orbs but nobody can CC the enemy healer? Do you just 3 orb anyway to top the damage meters? No, of course not. If you find yourself in a situation where you have 3 orbs, but for whatever reason neither you nor your team can set up a window of opportunity, never go for a random devouring plague. Although you can sometimes get it off on pets and kill them quickly, because most healers won't notice to dispel it or to heal in time. You will find yourself in this situation quite often during this downtime, while you wait for your mage to have deep backup or you wait for your fear or anything like that. The best thing to do would probably be purging, rebuffing yourself if you were purged, and refreshing your dots and don't use your instant mind blast or mind spikes if they proc. You want to save them for when you go for a kill. Most of the time shooting your instant mind blast won't really cause any pressure, because uh, a random 40 to 70k uh, mind blast is easily healed, and might not proc again at all when you go for the 3 orb. I want you to remember however that everything I just said should be taken as a guideline and not actual rules. It's been times, many times, when my mage was getting trained, but I had 3 orbs and every proc possible, so I just go solo the healer. In some cases the healer just died, in others it forced a peel, and in others our mage died and I was to blame. So take everything as a general guideline, okay? Oh, let's talk about how and when to CC. Unlike mages, Shadow Priests don't have the ability to control as much. However, in short windows RCC can be very scary. Sometimes it is a good idea to try to get a double fear on the DPS while silencing the healer. This is going to give you breathing space in that scary rogue mage opener and will quite often force a trinket or will of the forsaken. At least at my MMR it does, which is 2.2k-ish. Again versus rogues, you want to try and get one orb as fast as you can in order to disarm his shadow blades. Many rogues use shadow blades in the first opener, so if you fear them and they will it or trinket, then they are now stuck in a 5 seconds disarm. Most of the time all your CC will go into the enemy healer and it will usually start with a fear, followed by a silence, followed by a one orb or two orb disarm. Now add polymorph and cyclones into the mix and you'll begin to see why god comp is so strong. Many times versus druids, you will want to use your disarm horror first and then fear so that he doesn't displace your beast or typhoons your fear attempt. Or if your mage can land a palm poly or a deep, you can fear out of that. I want to take a moment and explain the procs a little bit. When you apply a dot, it will take a snapshot of your current stats, increased by, by buffs, of shadow form, etc. And throughout its entire duration, it will deal the damage based on the initial snapshot. Let me show you what I mean when I say the dots take a snapshot. So right now, I will have no buffs on myself, except for... Uh, never, I'm gonna take that off as well. And I'm going to do one shadow word pain on this guy. Right? And let's see how, how hard it takes. And now it hits for... 11k non-crit, right? And now I'm going to buff myself 
and go shadow form. As you see, it hits the same, 11k. But if I do it one more time right now, well, now it hits for 20k. See? Because I have my proc trinket up, I think I had my weapon enchant as well, and shadow form, which increases the damage by 25%. And also my inner fire, which gives me another 10% spell power. So you see, the damage, the damage bonus is quite quite high. So if you want to maximize your damage output, you will have to refresh your dots when your procs are up. That means right now. Well, I have one. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> However, keep in mind that the shadow priest's dots take for quite low damage, even with procs up. So it might be a smarter thing to go for burst when you have when your procs are up. But as I said before, everything depends on the situation at hand. If you consider the time is not right to go for a kill attempt, then refreshing your dots is maybe the next best thing to do pressure-wise. Now a few words about the proc trinket and the cloak enchant. Your proc trinket and cloak enchant, if you're a tailor, both have a 45 seconds internal cooldown. That means that after they activate, right? See, after they activate, they cannot uh, proc again till that 45 second uh, internal cooldown or ICD is over. As soon as they are not on cooldown, the chances of them procking is really high, I believe it's 50%. So as soon as the internal cooldown is over, you can pretty much guarantee your, your trinket will proc, right? What that means for you is, as soon as the gates open in arena, do not use renew or any other heal until you get in combat. These abilities that heal you can trigger your trinket, and since its internal cooldown is off, it will proc. And you will have wasted your initial proc pretty much. Now on the other hand, if you want to have the trinket proc by the time you have your first 3 orbs, which depending on a lot of things including RNG, should take you around 15 seconds since you engage in combat, then you might want to have that ICD active and time it so that, let's say 30 seconds after the game starts, the trinket will proc. That will require you to spam heals like flash heal around 15 seconds before the gates actually open. Keeping track of your trinket proc and even its internal cooldown by using add-ons, a stopwatch macro or trying to keep track of it yourself is crucial to being really successful with any DPS class in WoW PvP. I will talk more about positioning, self-healing and healing partners and what to do and how to play while being trained as a Shadow Priest in the next video. You can jump there by clicking this beautiful button over here. Or if you want to go back to the main menu video, click over here. Well, that's it for this one guys, I hope this helped, good luck and have fun! See ya!